Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a chatty get ready with me. I'm going to be testing out some new products, including the new L'Oreal True Match eye cream in a concealer, and also the LA Girl Break Free palette, this purple one. I got a lot of requests to see a look with this. So this is the look right here. You're seeing a little preview of it, but we'll see how it all comes together. I'm also going to be using a lot of older drugstore products as well, some favorites of mine. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my eyes first. Lately I've been liking to do those more because if there's any type of fallout, then it ends up ruining my foundation. And I really want my concealer to look good today since I'm testing out a new one. So I don't want all that fallout. I wanna be able to clean it up first. So I'm gonna start out with my Pixi Peach Corrector. I love this so much because it really like helps to brighten up my eye area. So what I like to do is just put it in the outer corners of my eyes, right where that fold is, where they turn down. And it just helps them to look not quite so downturned. It just hides all of that darkness. So I'll quickly show you like how that looks in comparison. So you can see like this eye, it doesn't look like it turns down like this one does because there's this little fold of skin and it just kind of hides that. So that's one reason I really love this corrector. I use it every single day. Even if I just use it for this, it's worth having it but I also am going to use it on the inner corners of my eyes as well because I do have kind of some shadows and some darkness. So I'll just do that too. Okay, and then I'm also going to put down an eye primer. This is the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer. I really like these. A lot of people compare them to the MAC Paint Pots. I think they are really similar. And while the MAC Paint Pots are actually an eyeshadow and these are labeled a primer, I feel like they do pretty much the same thing. So this is the shade Rose, and this one's a little bit more cool tone. So I think it'll go nicely with the cool tone purple look that I'm going to be doing. So let's just pop this on my lids and just let it set for a few minutes. These are a little bit more of a stiffer texture than your average eye primer. They do have that putty-like feel to them, which I happen to like because I think they dry down a lot quicker that way. Sometimes the liquids can feel tacky for a long time and then it's hard to blend matte shadows over them. So I really like these for that reason. All right, so next up, I'm actually gonna do my liner before my eyeshadow. I've really been loving liquid liner lately and doing winged liner. I definitely want to practice it more because it's something I've really struggled with over the years, having the hooded and downturned eyes, but I feel like I'm in a pretty good place with it now. Um, so I'll show you guys the trick that I do just to make sure that I get it right. Um, so what I like to do is map it out first with eyeshadow, and then if that looks good, then I'll go ahead and put the liner on top of that because I feel like the shadow is a lot easier to correct if you do it wrong. So I'm gonna go in with this LA Girl palette and I'm gonna use the deepest shade right here, this black, and I'm gonna use a winged liner brush. This is the Zoeva wing liner brush. <laughs> so um, this makes it really super easy just to get that angle. So I'm just gonna dip it into the black shadow and let's see what happens. I usually like to try to line up the wing with the angle of my bottom lash line, like to kind of just continue that up like that. So and then I'm just gonna fill in the corner of the triangle, like with my upper lash line and just go right along this. Now I'm gonna go in with the liquid liner. This is the only non-drugstore product in the video today, but this is the Lauren Conrad liquid eyeliner. I definitely wanna find a drugstore version that I love. A few of you have recommended the one from NYX, so I'll definitely be checking that one out soon. As soon as I head out to a drugstore, I just haven't been out in a while, so. All right, so now I'm just gonna go right on top of the one that I just created. And I definitely just have to clean this up a little bit. It got kind of smudgy. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead in with the eyeshadows and I'm gonna start out with my Zoeva Luxe Crease Brush. I love this brush. And I'm gonna use this purple shadow right here for my crease. And what I like about doing the liner first is I can kind of use the liner as a guide on where to stop with the eyeshadow. So while I'm blending, I'm really curious to hear like what you guys with kids are doing this year about school. 
we're still trying to figure this out. Um, we have to let them know this week, but we're so torn between keeping my son home and actually sending him. The cases are really low right now, um, but it doesn't mean they're going to stay that way. And also, they make them wear a mask all day, and he's only seven years old, so I'm really not sure how he's going to do with it. He doesn't like wearing it at all, like even in the store. So we were thinking about doing the virtual option and just keeping him home, but then, you know, he's going to miss out on friend time and he's already missed so much that it's really, really like, it's a tough call. Like, I don't know what to do at all. There's just a lot of things that are trying to, you know, trying to factor into this decision, but it's just, it's really tough. All right, so then just to soften the edges, I'm gonna take this matte ivory shade right here and just kind of go along the top edge of this one. I really like the way these shadows blend out a lot. These are really, really nice because they're not like really powdery where they blend away to nothing. And they're also not too pigmented where I feel like they're gripping to my eye and I can't get it to blend. So it's just really that perfect balance. I love it. I think these are honestly some of the best at the drugstore. All right, so now I'm gonna deepen up the crease a little bit and let's try, what shade do I wanna use? Maybe this one over here just to deepen things up. And I'm going to use my Zoeva Luxe Petite crease brush for this. This one is not quite as fluffy as the original. It's actually like one of my favorite brushes for the crease because it just, it's like very dense and it puts the shadow exactly where I want it to go. So I'm going to focus this one just right in my actual crease instead of going above it like I did with the other shade. And you see how this one, it just keeps it like in a perfect line. And I'm going right out to where the liner stops as well. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little half cut crease for my lid shade. And I think it just helps like not to spread the lid shade everywhere. It just helps me to keep it contained in the spot where it's supposed to go. I tend to like blend them up too high. So I like doing cut creases because it helps to just control that a little bit for me. So what I do is I just put a little concealer on my lid and then I just open my eyes, look around and see kind of like where it goes up to first. And then I just fill in the rest. I'm just gonna take a flat brush. This is the Lux Soft Shader from Zoeva and just pat this in. I find that this technique just helps my hooded eyes look a little bit wider, more awake. It gives me some extra lid space that I didn't have before, which is great. And then I'm gonna use this purple shade right here for my lid. This one is so beautiful. When I was doing the swatches, I couldn't wait to use this one first. I think it's so gorgeous. So. These are so rich and creamy and buttery and just super pigmented. Like, look at that pigment. It's insane how beautiful that is. And you see how the cut crease kind of helps. It almost makes it look like I have like a bigger lid space than I actually have, which is great. Um, so now I'm just gonna quickly go back into that Lux crease brush with that darker shade again and just kind of put a little bit more in the outer corner area by my eyeliner and work it back towards that lid shade just like a tiny bit just to give the outer corner some depth. I usually do this step first before the lid and I completely spaced on it so it's okay. <laughs> now I'm just going to go back into some of the shades that I used and put them down underneath my lower lash line and I'm going to start with this lighter purple one and go all the way across with that first and this is the Zoeva Luxe Pencil Brush. So I just like to connect where the upper lash line starts and then go straight across with the lighter shade. And then I'm going to go into the deeper shade that I put in my crease and just focus this more like in the outer third of the eye. 
Okay, so next for mascara, I'm going to be using the Essence Lashes of the Day. I really like this one a lot. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, but I like it just as much as the Lash Princess. I think it's really, really good. I love the really skinny brush that it has, too. It just helps to get right up to the roots of your lashes. Alright, so that is the finished eye look, and I'll quickly show you what that looks like. I love this palette. I think it's so beautiful. If you like purple eyeshadows, I think it just applied so nicely. I mean, it basically performed like any of my high-end palettes, so I'm really, really happy with that. Um, so next, let's move on to complexion. And for primer, I'm going to be using the Peach C Peach Glow Makeup Base. I talked about this in my YesStyle video. This is a K-Beauty brand, and it's actually really affordable. And I've been using this in my last couple of videos, and I've gotten so many comments on my skin saying that it looked so nice. And I really, really like what this does because it kind of gives your skin a little bit of a glow. It has some pink or peach tone to it. And it adds a lot of hydration and I'm sure you guys can probably see on camera just like the glow that it gives to my skin and it really peeks through the foundation nicely so it's not um, like over the top shimmery or glittery which I like. One thing I've been dealing with lately on my face is redness across the bridge of my nose all around here and down around my chin kind of like where I would wear a mask but the crazy part is I don't really wear masks that often like I don't really leave my house more than once or twice a week. And when I do wear my mask, it's for a very short time. I have one that's all cotton. Um, like, I don't know. I don't use scented laundry detergent or anything when I wash it. So I have no idea what this is about. It's really frustrating though. It's a very itchy. It almost feels like I'm having some sort of allergic reaction. I mean, I guess it could be the mask, but I just don't know because like I said, I don't wear it all that much. Um, it could be hormones, I guess, as well. I am starting to go through menopause, as crazy as that sounds. Um, so I've been having a lot of crazy hormonal stuff to deal with, and this could just be one more thing, unfortunately. Um, so anyway, for foundation, I'm going to go in with the Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation from L'Oreal. This has been another favorite of mine this summer. I think it's beautiful. I love the finish. I love the coverage of it. I think it's just an all-around awesome foundation for drier skin. If you have more mature skin, it's awesome as well. It's sort of like a tinted moisturizer with a little bit more coverage to it, so it's just really beautiful. And normally I like to apply foundation with my fingers. It's how I learned. I talked about this a lot in my makeup application tag. Growing up in the 80s and the 90s, I just like learned to apply my foundation with my fingers because that was the advice at the time. There were no beauty blenders and it wasn't easy to just walk into a drugstore and find brushes. Usually, you know, brushes were more like on the upper end um, and I didn't really have the money to buy expensive makeup back then. So whatever was in the drugstore, I think all they had was like those little wedge sponges. Um, and I tried using those once and it just kind of soaked up all my foundation. I didn't understand that I had to like dampen it first. So yeah, I just learned to apply it with my fingers and I just find that to be the easiest way. I think too, like the heat from your fingers really helps to like melt the product into your skin nicely as well. All right, so now let's move on to this True Match Eye Cream in a Concealer. It says it has 0.5% pure hyaluronic acid. Eye area looks fresher and less puffy in one week. Well, obviously we're not going to test it over the week. I mean, I will, but I'll have to let you guys know at a different time. It has 24-hour hydration. Um, it's suitable for all skin types, even sensitive skin. It has a lightweight blendable formula and does not clog pores. So I have mine in the shade N1-2. It's supposed to be more of like a neutral undertone. So it comes in a squeezy tube like this. I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit and apply this one with my fingers also. See what happens. Oh, it feels really, really lightweight. So it's definitely not a thick concealer. Wow, it actually doesn't feel like any concealer I've ever had before. It feels basically like an eye cream. It feels like a moisturizer, basically. But it's nice that it has some coverage to it. I don't think the coverage is super heavy by any means. It's actually very light. 
but I'm wondering too if you could build it up. I'll definitely try that. I don't really need to right now, but I just want to see if it starts to get cakey if I do, or if it's too dry looking under my eyes. No, I mean, it looks, it looks really nice. Even with that second coat, it looks really natural, very, very smooth. That's beautiful. We'll have to see if it creases like in my under eye wrinkles, but so far so good. I mean, there's the difference between the two eyes. I think it definitely like brightened up the area a little bit and just made everything look a little bit more flawless. I can't get over the texture of this. It is so thin and lightweight. I feel like I'm not putting concealer under my eyes right now. I'm kind of worried in a sense like that it might break up the foundation underneath because it really just feels like I'm putting a cream under here and that's not something I would normally do once I have my face makeup on. I would never just go in and put an eye cream on so it's kind of interesting but it doesn't look like it's doing anything like that so that's a good thing. All right so let me just go ahead and zoom you guys in and you can see my under eye area and what it looks like. I think it looks really good like I'm definitely not hating this right now and I guess we'll have to see too how long it lasts throughout the day because of how emollient it is. I'm just wondering if it's actually going to hold up. Alright, so moving on to blush, I'm going to be using the Flower Beauty Flower Pots in the shade Sweet Pea. I think this is beautiful. It's kind of like a dusty pink, almost bordering on purple, so I think it'll go really well with the look. And I'm going to apply this with my Refer Number no. 5 blush brush. It's so fluffy and so soft. And this color is so gorgeous. It's one of my favorite blushes that I reach for all the time. I love the glow coming through my foundation from that primer. It looks so nice. Like not just on the camera, but even in person, it looks really nice as well. All right, so there's the blush. And for lips, I'm gonna go in with the Flower Beauty Petal Pout Lipstick in the shade Naked Blush. This is another one of my absolute favorites. It's one of my go-to favorite lipsticks in general, but I also just love this formula so much. It's like the perfect nude pink lip that's not too pale. It doesn't like wash me out. But one of the things I love about this is it's very neutral. I feel like I can wear it with cooler tone looks or warm tone looks and it goes no matter what. It's really kind of awesome in that way. So anyway, here is the finished look. I'm going to go ahead and do my hair and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so hair is done. I'm just gonna go ahead about the rest of my day and I'll check in with you guys this evening and we'll see how the concealer in an eye cream or is it eye cream, eye cream in a concealer held up. I'm not too sure about that one just because it is really emollient, but we'll see. And also the eyeshadow, which I have a feeling is gonna be fine because I've tried this formula in the past. So I will check in with you guys a little bit later on. Hey guys, I'm back. It's about 7 p.m. So I've been wearing everything for about six and a half, almost seven hours now. And I have to say the eyeshadow on a positive note looks really, really good. Granted, I did put the shimmer shade over a concealer. I also had laid down the e.l.f. putty eye primer first, so that could have definitely extended the wear, but I just find in general that these LA Girl shadows are really long lasting, so I'm very, very happy with this palette overall. Um, I think it's beautiful. On the negative side, um, the True Match concealer or eye cream in a concealer, concealer. Um, I find that even though it is still there, I think to me, just looking in the mirror, it's really, really settling into the fine lines under my eyes. So I'm going to zoom you in really quick so that you can see what I'm talking about. It just doesn't look as smooth as it did before. I think it really, really settled into these lines. Um, so I'm not like the happiest with that. I think there are other affordable concealers out there like the one from Joa, the Maybelline Age Rewind that don't do that to me and that also look really smoothing underneath my eyes. So for me, I'm not a huge fan of this, even though it did feel really hydrating, it felt moisturizing under my eyes. I think just the amount of settling that it's doing makes me not really want to wear this on an everyday basis. Now I will continue to try it out 
over different foundations. It could also be, you know, the foundation that I'm wearing. It could even be the primer that's underneath. You know, it's possible if I wear something that's like more of a line smoothing primer, like my L'Oreal Studio Secrets one that I like, that maybe it'll like minimize the settling a little bit. So I'm gonna continue to test this out. This is obviously just a first impression. So at some point when I do an update video, I can definitely let you guys know if I've changed my mind, but for now, not super happy with it. Um, I think the blush still looks amazing. Um, I just reapplied the lipstick for this part of the video. It wore off a while ago. So anyway, guys, I think this video is long enough, so I'm going to cut it short here, but thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these products down in the comments below. Also, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you go, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye!